Once we found our icon faces, our uh, required, our selected icon faces, the best set of icon faces that can represent a whole training set of images, then each variable in the original data set can be represented in the terms of these K principal components. That is, each image in the training set data in face recognition, each image. Uh, in the training set data or the incoming unknown image can be represented in, as a linear combination or as a weighted sum of these eigenfaces that we had found earlier. So you see these weights over here, W1, W2, and so on, to WK, and these are the uh, linear weighted sum of these eigenfaces. So in one way I could say that, okay, each image is contributing some features to the training set data. Right, so in a reversible way, I could also say that, okay, uh, this image contains a little bit of this feature, a little bit of this feature, and a little bit of this, a little bit of all the k eigenvectors. So it's uh, so what I'm saying is that this face is made up of all of the eigenfaces in proportions. So I represent them uh, these proportions in a vector. This is a weight vector where I assign the weights. If I multiply this with the uh, with the face, I probably get the percentages, the proportions of the eigenfaces which make up this training set image. So each image, face image, whether it be training set image or the incoming unknown image, is represented in form in terms of the eigenfaces. Uh, and this is the crux of principal component analysis uh, in the face recognition method that we are studying. And representing a data point this way, that is representing an image this way, as a combination of k principal components, reduces the number of values from m to k needed to recognize it. Because before we said that a training set of m images, for example, the m could be 400, was now is now represented in terms of k eigenfaces, and k could be like 50. So 50 is very much less than 400. Naturally, this makes recognition process faster and also more free of error. Why free of error? Because in the previous uh, image where we saw the eigenfaces, we saw that we discarded all those noisy uh, eigenfaces. We so in short, we actually disca discarded all the noise in the data set. So now noise will have least effect on the results of recognition. And now how is actually PCA done? The mathematical method that it, it is done by eigenvalue decomposition of a data covariance matrix. And the results of PCA are actually discussed in terms of the component scores, that is, uh, a data point, for example, a training set, uh, an image, a face image, is made up of how much of which of the K principal components, that are which of, uh, how much of each K eigenfaces makes up a face image and the loadings, that is the weights. Now these are the weights, the weight vector actually that I just showed you uh, before. So that is uh, all for understanding or having an info about PCA before we know how it works. So I'll just revisit all that we have read till now in the form of bullets and replace uh, principal component, the word principal component with eigenface, data point, or variable with image, data set with the training set of images. For the sake of understanding its relation to face recognition, I'm doing this and reread what we've just read right till now. And let's see if we understand PC in relation to recognition or not. I won't be reading it more to you. You can just go through it. I hope it makes more sense now. This tutorial was basically just to throw light on PCA in relation to face recognition. Now in the uh, next part of level 4B we will be looking at how actually what are the steps to train the recognizer and to recognize an unknown face in PCA and faces method. Well, that's all for now. See you in the next tutorial.